Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Ruth Ann Webster. I'm with the League of Women Voters here in New Ulm. Welcome to the New Ulm Forum. Our topic today is Emerald Ashbor. Our guest, Paul Eglin, is a member of the New Ulm City Tree Commission. Welcome, Paul. And would you please tell our listeners uh, about your background as it relates to trees and forestry and our topic today? Okay. Um, I went to college at Iowa State University in Ames, majored in forestry with a minor in forest biology. So I'm interested in trees and how they grow. Um, when I graduated a long time ago, uh, I got a job with the Corps of Engineers because they were hiring and not too many other people were. So because I had a d degree in forestry as a park ranger is what I was employed as, I was in charge of putting trees in place for the campers around the lake I worked at in Southern Iowa. I worked 37 years with the Corps of Engineers and uh, retired recently. Well, I retired in 2010, so that's been a long time ago. And, uh, but during that time, I went to all the shade tree short courses that were available to Ames and uh, to keep my knowledge level up. And I heard about emerald ash borer and they discovered it mm -hmm. on this official title here. Mm -hmm. um, the little green critter on top of Abraham Lincoln on the penny, that's an emerald ash borer beetle. And the minted date of the penny is the year emerald ash borer was found in the United States. 2002, and I heard about it not too long after. By 2005, I had heard about emerald ash borer and what it was doing, uh, and it's been a big problem, mm -hmm. and it is has become one for New Ulm. Mm -hmm. Well, good. Well, as you can see, we've got somebody who knows what they're talking about, and we appreciate your knowledge, and we appreciate your work. So there we go, we meet the enemy, we meet the enemy. Now I wanna talk about, I wanna talk about this creature. This is the adult beetle. Right. Right, and like a lot of these, uh, these types of creatures, it has three stages, egg, larvae, adult, right? Yeah, yeah more that's or close. Less. Yeah, more close or less. enough. Yeah. And, and would you tell us, uh, this, this creature has wings, right? Yes, it yes, does. Yes, tell, it does. Yeah, tell us about how they, tell us what they do with those wings. Okay, well, they fly, but, uh, all right. Okay. Um, emerald ash borer, it was found in 2002 in Detroit, and I'll get into the actual the life cycle. Okay. That's, that's what you're really interested in. <laughs> it's made it from Detroit to my place down in Southern Iowa. Up here, it's spread out all across the United States. In fact, the Department of Agriculture had attempted to quarantine it and through a federal quarantine. And uh, they just recently basically threw in the towel. Before I retired in 2010, when they found it in Southern Missouri, they did not attempt to eradicate it in 2010 when I heard about it, the, the efforts. So I knew that things were going badly then. So we'll get into the actual cycle. It was put on by the state of Minnesota, Department of Natural Resources. They put together a slideshow for the emerald ash borer when it was found in New Ulm in 2019, first found. And this is a show that they actually put together for that. And we will have a link to this uh, slideshow presentation 
Uh, so if you want to watch this again, you should be able to find that. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're interested in what it does. Mm -hmm. The part that really hurts is this part right here. The, the serpentine tunneling that the boar does under the tree bark. That's what does the damage to the ash tree. The beetle doesn't do anything. It feeds on the leaves up in the top, but it, it doesn't really hurt the tree. But the boring under the bark is what kills the tree. When, I, when, you first, when I first heard you give this presentation, I was struck by the number of eggs oh. that the ash borer lays. I mean, well, you, he, uh, she's up there eating on the leaves, but she's also, you know, you creating know, offspring. The life cycle is such that when the pupa, that's the overwintering stage of the boar, it's resting just, just under the bark. And when it gets warm enough, it, it wakes up and it chews its way out through the bark and makes a D-shaped hole like that one right oh, there. Okay. Can you see it? Okay, I can see it. It's only about an eighth of an inch in diameter, mm -hmm. as you can see by the penny. Mm -hmm. And the, the boar chews its way out and flies mm -hmm. to the top of an ash tree and looks for another boar. Uh, <laughs> male and female, they need one of okay. each. So they bait okay. up in the tree and eat ash leaves, mm -hmm. which are good eating. But it doesn't hurt the tree that much. What it does hurt is uh, the life cycle. Ah, yes, here we go. It gets out and flies around right here. And they fly to the top of the tree and they lay eggs. That's a real enlarged egg. They lay a lot each, of them. Each, each boar. The female, when they mate, can lay 50 to 300 eggs, each one. Mm -hmm. And that's probably not unusual for insects. And then the boar's eggs, they hatch and the boar chews its way into the, under the bark and starts feeding on the tree. And the little larva makes serpentine tunnels under the tree and then they pupate. This is something I just learned this year, that when they pupate, they kind of scrunch all down. And the final thing they do is they chew their way almost to the outside and they leave just a little bit left. And that's where they overwinter. The woodpeckers have figured that out. And you'll see that uh, they're looking for the boars to eat because they're good eating about that stage, you know, nice and juicy. Mm -hmm. So the woodpeckers flip off that little piece of bark and there's the head of the pupa sticking out at them and they pick it out and eat it. So that's what I learned this last winter, why the woodpeckers do that. Well, speaking of winter, I mean, it, with some insects or some pests, the frigid temperatures here uh, in Minnesota uh, will take care of them. Apparently that doesn't happen with the emerald ash borer. Emerald ash borer is from, what is it? North East Asia, Manchuria, Korea, uh, up there where it's cold. Mm -hmm. Things that grow in Manchuria grow around here. Emerald ash borer does all right around here. Okay. Um, I came across in some reading that if it gets to be 30 below, mm -hmm. the, they don't do quite as well. They'll, not as many will hatch. Okay. But was it 30 below last winter here? No, really. <laughs> Wind chill doesn't count when you're under the bark. All right. Okay? Okay. Okay. So they have a little, they have a little uh, chart here. You can find immatures under the bark January through December. Oh, okay. You can fry and fly and okay. find free living adults only from about May through September because okay. they like it kind of warm. Mm -hmm. But the adults don't do 
very much damage mm -hmm. to your tree. Mm -hmm. It's the bores underneath. Mm -hmm. And here's the tree. This, this is typical in New Ulm. Mm -hmm. A survey said that 21% of the trees in New Ulm are ash trees. 21%. Mm -hmm. For rough purposes, that means one out of every five trees in New Ulm is an ash tree. Every ash tree is subject to the emerald ash borer. It's good eating. Mm -hmm. This is what they're doing under a healthy tree. They get in it and they make the serpentine tunnel. Now, somebody had to ax that tree to expose it. Mm -hmm. And if I came into your yard and you had an ash tree, you would not be happy with me if I chopped the bark off to show you the tunnel. But that's the little borer. That's, that's moving around. The little boar's chewing a hole. Mm -hmm. He's eating the that cambium tissue. Mm -hmm. And it, when enough of them do it, oh, this is what happens. Right. That same that same street. Mm -hmm. See the nice. The that's what they call canopy is all the leaves on the mm -hmm. tree. If you can look up and not see the sky through your tree, you got good canopy. If the boar's been working on it, you can look up in the summertime and you can see sky through your tree. Mm -hmm. That's, those trees are basically mm -hmm. dead. And after they, after they get done chewing on the tree enough, all the bark will end up dying. They cut the bark off this, this exposed area here and it shows enough tunneling you can't hardly see any healthy mm -hmm. healthy tissue healthy tissue on a on a on an ash tree mm -hmm. it looks white like that mm -hmm. when it gets brown that's bad mm -hmm. means the tree's dying approximately how long does it take for an infestation of emerald ash borer to kill a, a, an elm tree the first one that gets in your tree one boar, 300 eggs laid up in your treetop, it's not gonna kill your tree mm -hmm. the first year. But those boars will also lay more <laughs> eggs the next year. Mm -hmm. And in three to five years, your tree will probably be dead. Mm -hmm. um, the first tree that's infected it might take five years because you got to go through several generations. Mm -hmm. If you have a lot of trees that die all at once mm -hmm. and boars are coming out of them, if you have a tree that hasn't already been hit, when all those boars look for a new tree to eat, mm -hmm. they're all going to hit it at once. Mm -hmm. And so they'll lo it'll start losing branches a whole lot faster. Mm -hmm. That's how come they give you a range, mm -hmm. three to five years. A, a tree is hit by the boar, it's not really totally killed. The roots are still alive. And so the roots keep sending up food and, mm -hmm. and there's energy. And so they keep sending out branches. They're trying to replace the leaves. Okay, okay. I, I this, wanna... this is one thing you might want to know. Okay. This is, do you have an ash tree? Mm -hmm. I've been studying trees all my life and I know what an ash tree is, but I understand that a lot of people do not know, and that's fine. If you have an ash tree, the buds on the branches are opposite. Mm -hmm. The leaves are opposite each other quite often. The branches usually want the first branches that come out of a main stem or opposite. So you got opposite and you got a leaf has lots of leaflets. That means one leaf has many parts for an ash tree. There are other trees that look like that. Black walnut, bitternut hickory. All right, mm -hmm. let's see here. A green ash I've looked at so many of them, I know them by the bark. 
That is green ash bark because of the pattern. And that's green ash bark. There's a green ash leaf mm -hmm. right there. Those are healthy. Well, mm -hmm. these first two are healthy. healthy. The others that are banded, yeah, we don't know it's wintertime. Mm -hmm. right. Ash is common to Minnesota. Okay. It's, it's everywhere. Green ash is everywhere. Black ash likes it where it's wet. White ash shows a little burgundy red in the fall. Mm -hmm. All right. And mountain ash. Mountain ash is not not really one of the ashes. I, I didn't think okay. so. Right, uh, right. It's it's a different tree, mm -hmm. and I haven't read that it's that it's uh, subject to that right. emerald ash borer. All right. This is the little critter that's doing all the damage. Oh my goodness. And this right here, if you chopped your tree open, if you look at that. The back end of the larva, mm -hmm. if it's got two little little fingers on it, mm -hmm. that's an emerald ash borer. Mm -hmm. You won't probably do that as a homeowner, and you probably won't even see some of this other stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you do, there are S galleries under the bark. The emerald ash borer has those two little hairs on the back of the, the larva. You probably won't see the D-shaped holes. That's what they say. Oh yeah, look at the D-shaped holes. I heard about D-shaped holes all the time, but I never, I didn't see, oh, I actually saw one down low, but it's hard to find them. They're only an eighth of an inch in diameter. They're tiny. And the beetle. Look at this little critter. Oh my. Fly. That's when they fly. Yeah. When I first heard about emerald ash borer and they were putting out traps trying to mm -hmm. find them, they have a big purple trap that they put out for them with stick them in it, a little mm -hmm. sticky, uh, and, and they'd catch these boars. And I didn't understand why they were purple, but the back end of the boar when they fly is purple. So they kind of look brownish purple when they fly. And their greenish wing doesn't, doesn't take up much space, so you don't notice it being very green. There's a lot of green insects in Minnesota all kinds. These blister beetles, what are they? Six spotted tiger beetle. <laughs> I'm not much of an insect person, but there's there's a lot of different green bugs. Mm -hmm. Insects, beetles. The emerald ash borer is just one of many. Mm -hmm. You probably won't identify them that way. No, no. But no, things but you yeah, will this, see. That's what we will see, right. Things you will see this is a little symptom progression. Mm -hmm. You know, the larvae are little. Mm -hmm. The first year, nothing much. Mm -hmm. Woodpeckers might start the second year looking for the larva under the bark. What you will notice, and you can notice this last winter, is the top of the tree. They go to it first. And so that's where the boar damage starts showing up. And it's not the boar damage you see, usually in the wintertime. It's the woodpecker flecking, because oh. they're eating the boars. Mm -hmm. Distribution. <laughs> I, I, I want to okay. ask something. Um, one of the things that I think we've seen is the city's effort to remove ash trees. Yes. And I, I'm on Facebook, and I've had Facebook friends who ask in a rather unpleasant way, why are they cutting down the ash trees? To save the, you're cutting down the ash trees to save the ash trees, that doesn't make any sense to me. So can you okay. explain, can you talk about it's that? Not, it's not cutting down ash trees to save ash trees. That's not the proper way to phrase it. It's removing ash trees so they don't all die the same month or year and and all fall down around your head because they start falling apart pretty fast after they die. Mm -hmm. And it's not because the wood gets rotten like it did with emerald um, Dutch elm disease okay. killed elm trees because mm -hmm. that was a fungus and actually caused the wood to rot. But the boar doesn't cause the wood to rot, but it does cause it to be dead and it dries out. When it gets dry, it gets brittle mm -hmm. 
and the branches start to snap. Mm -hmm. So you don't want a bunch of dead trees. And if you got mm -hmm. a lot of trees to cut, you don't want to wait till the last minute to cut all your trees down the same day because you don't have enough manpower, money, or budget to handle all of that. Are you telling me that the ash trees are not being saved? They're not really savable on a, on a large it, scale? Not on a large scale, no. They're, they're all going to become rare. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, emerald ash borer can infest, that means eat, mm -hmm. a tree down to one inch in diameter. Oh my goodness. If you know about trees, maybe not, but for an emerald, uh, for, for an ash tree, if it's one inch in diameter at breast height, DBH, diameter breast height, four and a half feet up, uh -huh. that tree's not big enough to make much seed. So the tree is not gonna be able to survive long enough to make seed to reseed itself. If it does, ash will be around. If it doesn't, they may just kind of die out. Mm -hmm. um, it costs you a lot of money to treat your tree, mm -hmm. or it costs you a lot of money to take it down too, mm -hmm. to have it cut down. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a toss up. Mm -hmm. If you have, you have an option to treat your tree if you start treating it before it gets infested. Mm -hmm. The reason you're not able to treat it successfully after it's been infested is the damage that's done to the tree before you treat it. Okay. A branch that dies in your tree is dead. It's not gonna come back to life. Mm -hmm. So you have to treat it before it dies, mm -hmm. before the boar gets in it and girdles it. Um, I can give you a big lecture about no. how trees grow <laughs> and, no, and that's okay. the important yeah. part is the cambium tissue. That's the reproducing part of the tree. So if the boar eats that, everything above that point is going to be dead. Mm -hmm. Even if you treat it and kill the boar, if it's already eaten that tissue, everything above that point, if they girdle your whole tree, if there's enough of them, it's going to be dead. So, so if, if your tree top is dead and you got bushes down below when you treat it, mm -hmm. what you're going to have left is a stump with branches coming out with a top that's dead that's dropping out. Mm -hmm. That's what will result. Mm -hmm. And it's not a safe situation. Well, and safety, that's one of the things that I think uh, that had to do with the city's decision to start taking down trees. It is, yeah. because when all the trees start dying, you want to have them, you want to be cutting them down before they're all dead. Mm -hmm. And there's so many that are going to die that mm -hmm. you have to start working on it. So you're, you're not cutting down the trees to save the trees. That's no, not, no, it's, that's not it's the not, situation. It's not to not save the trees. Thing. It's just to try to even out the workload. Mm -hmm. okay. That's the that's, main thing. That's a, good, that's a good analogy, even out the workload. Yeah. This, this good, little right. thing is right. from, the, from the program. Yeah. It's kind of interesting to people in New Hall, maybe. Right. If you look, see that little green X? I see it. The way I understand it, that's where they first spotted the emerald ash borer in New Ulm. Mm -hmm. You'll notice that this is Center Street, and what is it, Martin Luther King, College. or Martin Luther University is right, right up here, mm -hmm. and downtown is right along here on Minnesota Street. This circle around from this point out to the outer edge of the circle, mm -hmm. that's two miles. Okay. They say that, from what I've read, if it's doing it on its own, if it's flying, from an infected tree, it'll move about a half mile, six blocks, mm -hmm. six blocks, oh, okay. six blocks, two, in four years, it's two miles. Mm -hmm. And that's basically this town of New Ulm is 
has got exposed uh, emerald ash bores, basically what you have in 2019, 20, 21, 22, oh, oh, 20, 23, 20 that's years. this summer. That's five, that's five, five years, years out. out. That means right. it should be out as far as the outer edge of that circle. I was down at uh, Minicon Park. Mm -hmm. That's down fishing on the river last year. I noticed there was boars down there uh, evident. So mm -hmm. it's not, it's not, uh, you can't tell where it goes. Ash is good firewood. <laughs> so if I cut down an ash tree and I burn wood to heat my house, mm -hmm. I'm gonna move that wood to my house. Okay. There is a quarantine involved. Okay. And the whole town, the uh, whole town, the whole, the whole county's in quarantine from 2019. Okay. But if I took wood from New Ulm and I live over wherever in, in Brown County. Sleepy Eye. If I move it to Sleepy Eye, yeah. Or Springfield or Hun, well, I don't know if Hunska's in it. We're outside Hanska. Hanska's in uh, Brown County. Is it? Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm not, I'm only a couple years in town and I don't know oh. <laughs> about very well where things are, but I know that Emerald Ashbore can get a free ride to somebody else's okay. place um, and it can appear mm -hmm. wherever somebody moved wood. Okay. It can maybe hop on, on vehicles and move, but nobody's proved that. Oh. But it, it takes a couple of them to, uh, you need to start an infestation. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you got to have something that'll lay eggs. Uh, uh, you got to yes. have a boar that, a female boar that's uh, been fertilized right. and uh, lay fertile eggs. Right. What am I doing? All right, move on. We're going on. Right. So we're talking about you're not supposed to move firewood. Right. Yeah. Right. If you move firewood, you're definitely moving the boar. If you got a white ash tree, mm -hmm. that's, that's like this one right here. Oh my goodness. You know, the, the, the white ash has smooth, smoother bark than the green ash. Uh -huh. And the woodpeckers don't hit it quite as hard. Okay. But the emerald ash borer likes to eat the bark, uh, the cambium under the bark anyway. Right. Sometimes they'll keep on growing and then the bark outside the, the boar affected area will will break off. Oh my goodness. And then you can see the you can see, see the underneath the bark because it broke off. And that serpentine shape. That's is a characteristic. Mm -hmm. So, oh so my goodness. we know about the serpentine thing. What else do we know? Don't we know you're not supposed fire. to move firewood. And that was the end of their show. Yeah, oh, there's or, treatments. Removal or treatment. There are treatments. Yeah, removals or treatments mm -hmm. before emerald ash borer hits. Mm -hmm. 2019, mm -hmm. treat your trees. That was okay. that was oh. four years ago. <laughs> that didn't help you. Uh -huh. If you've got woodpecker damage on your tree, mm -hmm. that's a sign that the boar's already right in there. it. The woodpeckers aren't mm -hmm. killing it. They're just eating the boars that are on the tree. If you've got a dead tree, you need to remove it because it, you know, everything goes up, will come down. down. If you don't take it down, it's gonna it's come gonna down come on down. its own. Right. Um, and you, like you said, that's a safety issue. Your tree is. is falling over. It is, right? and it hurts. Right. Uh, right. When you got a big right. tree dropping on your head, even little branches are not real fun. <laughs> um, right. right. So, okay. where are we at? Wait a minute. Wait. Okay. What is this? Oh. Can you see daylight through your tree? Yes. That's I not can. a good sign. Oh, okay. The branch tips are uh, are dying back on this oh, one. I see. See the outer branches are kind of dead. If that's the way the tree, my tree in my backyard looks. They'll start looking that way. Uh -huh. um, this tree here. Oh my! Look at that. We're going to see a lot of that this summer. Mm -hmm. You can see that the top of the tree, there's some branches that are dying or dead. Mm -hmm. There's some branches that still look green. 
but there's there's areas down underneath that don't have leaves. Mm -hmm. So that that's a not a good looking tree. Let's see. If you've got a healthy looking tree and it's 15 inches in diameter, you can treat it yourself by chemicals. Okay. Now the chemicals are poison. They call them pesticides for a reason. reason. It's poison. Mm -hmm. You got to do it according to the label. Mm -hmm. You got to read the whole label and do it according to the label. If they're bigger than 15 inches in diameter, that means, that basically means if you hug your tree, if you can't touch your fingers, it's so big that you need to pay somebody to do it. Okay. If it's got enough leaves to make it happy, you can get it treated if you want to save it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you need to make arrangements for its final departure. Let's see, we got a short, we'll go back to the Emerald Bash Bore handout. There we go, my favorite. That's that's a fine one. Then we'll go on this one. Okay. There's our fancy bore. So that does the damage. You can look at this and it's mm -hmm. brown. That means that tree's already dead. Mm -hmm. There's bores. If you see them down low like that, your tree's probably, mm -hmm. Your tree's probably passed. There's there's the boar coming out. Well, right. That's what the woodpeckers do to your green ash tree. Right. They pop off all the outer bark. Looking for the boars. I think we've learned a lot. This is what the tree looks like in the summertime. This is what you'll see this summer driving around New Elm. Mm -hmm. This tree has enough damage that it probably will be lost. You see, there's maybe, there's maybe one branch that's a little green, but it probably has mm -hmm. boars in it. Mm -hmm. And there's epicarmic branching. That means down low. Mm -hmm. The tree's trying to replace its leaves. Mm -hmm. And where am I at? Well, I think Somebody. Oh. Let's Here see. Go. Here we go. This is the epicarmic branching. Oh, the very yes, last that's the one thing you talked about. The very the very last effort of the ash tree to stay alive yeah, right. is to send out leaves down low right. where there's no bores because mm -hmm. the woodpeckers have got everything. Mm -hmm. Well it's a sad it's a sad end, but that's the that's the end. It that, is. That's the sand. And I'd like to, I'd like you I I think I think we've learned a lot about emerald ash borer and the difficulty uh, that uh, the city is facing? The, the city has um, a website. Yes, okay. And the, shade, uh, the Tree Advisory Commission yep. has a webpage, and it there looks like go. this. And, and there's go. documents on it. Explains yep. boulevard trees, right. policy, what trees are recommended. Uh, you need a permit to take a tree out on the boulevard. you got to go down to City Hall. Right. If you, and there's a list of uh, licensed tree applicators. Right, good. And it needs to be updated, but you can call these people right. up and they'll probably be good. still good. willing to do the work. Well, I think, we're, I think we'll ask that that link be put on the, uh, on the uh, that would program be good. as well. And uh, gosh, thank you. This is the second time I've heard this. And I, I learned something the second time, so, uh, uh, hit, hit the link and uh, you'll you'll learn or not. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome. Yes. There is money available a little bit. A little bit. Now. For tree removal on the boulevard and for planting on the boulevard. Okay. You get more money to plant a tree than you get to take it out. It out. Right. Although it's going to cost you more to take it out mm -hmm. than it will be to plant a new one. Right. So. so there's a little bit of money and that's on a grant. Mm -hmm and the city is dispersing it, connected with the permit program that they uh, do. Good, and so. that's on the website. And they'll also All cut right. out your stump on the boulevard. Good. That's the thing that they'll do for you right. for free. Right, right, good. The city will do that. Good. Well, thank you. Thank you for, uh, thank you for sticking with, it, with us on the New Alm Forum, and uh, good luck with your replacement trees, right? Yeah, don't plant all the same trees. <laughs> That's good advice. Yeah. That's good advice. Most people have only a few ash, mm -hmm. but there are a few yards mm -hmm. that have all ash in them. Mm -hmm. So 
you get a chance to replant your yard is, or to treat a bunch of trees <laughs> if you have started treating them already. Right. Good. So. All right.